you know, GameStop had 138% of all the stock that existed sold short. In other words, sold stock, they sold 38% more stock that did not exist, right? But that's nothing compared to what they've done with gold and silver. Should be illegal, but it depends on who's writing the rules. In the general market, you know, I think that both gold and silver will continue to be manipulated as the banks and as the central banks are accumulating both of those. So do I think that it's gonna be the, the normal little guy? Well, history says no, okay? So I would have to agree with it. However, this is what everybody really needs to know. If you want to benefit from what is happening, then you do what the smartest guys in the room are doing for themselves. So if you don't know anything else, and what are they doing? They're buying silver, they're buying gold. Not the contracts, the physical. They're standing for delivery and they're taking possession and they're taking advantage of these prices. And the reason why those that do that will end up winning. So yeah, some of us little guys are absolutely going to win. And that's because on a global basis, the fiat money system is dead. It died in 2008, it's been on life support, and I don't think it takes anybody, any effort to see how truly crazy and insane all of these markets are. So when I talk about a reset, the way that they've done a reset over 4,800 times, no other options is they reset that fiat money that has no intrinsic value. It is used in one area against something gold that is all intrinsic value because it's all, it's used across the entire swatch of the global economy. And so that's just how a reset is done. And silver is the secondary monetary metal. It doesn't outperform uh, during these kinds of transitions because there's lots of data on this. It really does not outperform gold because gold's the primary currency metal, but it certainly performs quite well. Not that at that point you would want to convert either one of those into the currency unless you're going to pay off some fixed rate debt or buy some income producing assets or buy some of those other assets that now have gone from here being completely overvalued to here as gold and silver are here. And you just convert it into those and rock and roll hoochie coat. There's lots of legal forms. Inflation is a legal form of theft, isn't it? So uh, I think any of it is, is plausible because frankly, desperate governments do desperate things. Can they tax you 100%? Well, you know, there was a time in this world in the as we were kicking off the new system where the very high net worth people were taxed at 90%. So is that possible? Of course it is. But I'm gonna tell you, even if it's 90%, having 10% of something that's real is better than having 100% of nothing. Yeah. So, you know, um, and the other part of it is the kind that you buy. So you have to pay attention to what the people at the top of the heap, those one percenters or the one percent of the one percenters, what are the kinds of things that they are buying for themselves? Because that is most likely to get the best, most preferential treatment. That's why personally, I do not buy bullion coins, so new stuff because that's considered monetary gold. And I think that is most likely the kind of gold that they're referring to because it's 98% of all the gold that's out there. But I'm kind of thinking that if somebody can pay $8 million, $15 million for an ounce of gold, they either write the laws or have the ability to influence those that write the laws. Uh, well, it has happened in our lifetime in India in 2016, in Venezuela in 2011. Um, so do I think that's likely? Yeah, I do actually think that's likely.
Yeah. That's why I that's why I don't buy bullion. Hmm. And I kind of use the guidance if I can hold it in a retirement plan. I don't feel the same way about silver. I need to say that. Hmm. But if I can hold it inside of a retirement plan, I don't want it. Hmm. Nice. Because because when they if they should do an over, look all of the price manipulations, all of the inflation, that is a form of confiscation. It just has a different name, yeah. right? So, you know, it's hard for me to believe that they're gonna do this to you for your entire life from the day you were born, but then when when they're finishing off the system, taking us into that next system, go, but wait, no, you get to keep this, no, no. They don't want you to keep any of your wealth. Yeah. Our effort, our labor, and they have absolutely, I mean, look, if you can't come up with 400 bucks in an emergency, you think we've just been through an emergency? Hmm. You know, it, 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 it's so much deeper and it's not just 2020 or 2021 or even, you know, or even 1971 when Nixon, they do it so nicely, took us off the gold standard. No, what he actually did was hand over full control of inflation to private central bankers. And tell me something, you've got just a few percentage of the world that collects interest, everybody else pays interest, right? What do they know? Bankers know debt and, in and interest. Now moving into this next space, what they have in mind for us is really even worse than that because you're gonna have just the few that own stuff and look at the World Economic Forum. Everybody else is going to rent stuff, including the shirt off your back and you're gonna be happy. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Who do you think gets to control it if they own it? So you're looking over here at COVID, or you're looking over here at GameStop, or you're looking over in Iran with the new nuclear powers that were hidden, or here, Putin, or wherever. You're looking all over the place, and therefore they're getting to do all of this quiet change over here. But I would say that right now the biggest thing I see is the um, general public that really doesn't understand what's going on rushing into these markets in a big way. Of course, they've been given the money to do that. But um, yeah, the naive public always eats it in the shorts. So this is a really big red flag for me. When you see there's a little EV company that of course has not made any money, but it's up, the stock is up 3000% in the last eight months. That's kind of crazy.